Профессиональное изобразительное искусство в Казахстане явление достаточно молодое. The professional fine arts of Kazakhstan is a fairly young phenomenon, about 100 years since its formation. In this relatively short time span, in comparison to the history of mankind, numerous magnificent art pieces were created. Several generations of talented artists were born, whose artwork became the pride of our museum. Their heritage has become a golden fund of artistic culture which Kazakhstan carefully preserves. It is the culture and history of Kazakhstan. Among those artists, we single out the one that stands apart, the one who was at the very beginning of pictorial art in Kazakhstan. His name is Abilhan Kastev. In 1984, the country's main art museum was named in his honor, and today the museum celebrates its 85th anniversary. Today, in this year, this museum celebrates its 85th anniversary. Gulmira Kenjibulatovna, the leading art museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan, is named after Abilhan Kastev. Of all the respected artists, this particular artist was chosen. Why? As you know, for Kazakhstan, academic painting is a completely new area of art culture. We never had such concepts as canvas, oil painting and pictorial art before, but there has always been an aspiration. Son of the shepherd, a small child, fell in love with painting. He painted everything around him. And over the years his fondness of this hobby grew stronger. Even while working at the construction site of Turkseep, he would dedicate all his free time to sketching, painting. The foreman at a construction site accidentally saw his drawings and he instantly realized that these were no mere scribbles. He advised Abilhan to enroll into an art school, which he did. Abilhan Kastev joined Hludov's studio, where he continued to purposefully and methodically comprehend the basics of professional art. In fact, he still remained natural self-taught artist, extremely talented. Who else but Abilhan Kastev, who was the first to feel an irresistible desire to paint, could be considered the founder of the fine arts of Kazakhstan. It is completely logical that the first art museum of Kazakhstan bears the name of the pioneer of fine arts. Первый художественный музей Казахстана носит имя основоположника изобразительного искусства. А каковы основные сюжетные тематики? What were the main narratives in his art, in his pictorial works and watercolor paintings? Он показывает быт казахов кочевников, джейляу. He depicts the life of Kazakh nomads, pastures. Moreover, he was fascinated with the theme of restructuring of the accustomed life. It was a time of changes, a turning point when the old way of life began to change rapidly. Steam trains introduced to the steppe, grain and cotton were harvested. Labor of people, glorification of people's work, the changes that took place in the life of Kazakhs, he meticulously transferred all this to his canvases. Therefore, in our days, his work is not only a personal heritage, but also a documented historical heritage, which enables people to study the history of the Kazakh people. Люди могут изучать историю казахского народа, становление нового строя социалистического. The formation of a new socialist system in the republic. His preferred style of art was realism, therefore his works are practically documentaries. Perhaps it would be appropriate to describe his paintings as a chronicles of the era. I agree with you. 
Exactly. Perhaps that was his goal. But on the other hand, he was interested in everything new. He was the first artist who realized his duty before people and art, the duty to translate everything he saw to the canvases. He may have realized his historical mission, not only as an artist, but as an individual. He might not be as famous as other artists in the world. Not as publicized as names everyone is familiar with from the very young age. The international community is not yet closely acquainted with our art, and this holds great prospects for growth and future work for us. However, in terms of his talent, I believe he is a world-class artist. This acknowledgement is just a matter of time. We are already holding exhibitions abroad. Specialists and art critics from different parts of the world come to our museum and they all note the authenticity of his perspective on life, the manner of painting, compositional techniques and coloristic creativity. This is a window to the world. It is our task to make him popular all over the world. This is our goal. Thank you very much. Why is this particular artist so important in the formation of fine arts in Kazakhstan? He began his journey when, in fact, this type of art didn't exist within our country. Before that, we mostly had applied and decorative arts, which was designed not only to decorate everyday life, but to depict those objects that were the everyday companions of nomads. These items had a functional purpose, items that were part of their daily life. Imagine Abilhan Kastiev, born in 1904 in the village of Chizhin. From early childhood, he was absorbing the aesthetics of decorated objects that were a part of his everyday life. From the very young age, he felt these artistic cravings. He tried to express them by carving figurines from shell rock or limestone. Sometimes exchanging these figures for paper and pencils with school children. He aspired to draw, but such activities were frowned upon back then. Early 20th century experiments of the young men were unsupported by religion. Islam prohibits depiction of living beings, but talent was there and it strove to find the way out. When the sprouts of his talent were recognized, he was recommended to enroll to Hludov's private studio, which opened in 1921 in Almata, known as Verne at the time. Hludov guided Kastev to learn the basics of a completely new art style, unknown in this region so far. Oil painting is practically and technically impossible for those leading the nomadic lifestyle. This is a completely different way of artistic thinking. Hlutov taught Kastev both the basics of technical work with materials and the technique of working with watercolors. Watercolor is thought to be among the most challenging techniques. Surprisingly, that is where the talent of the gifted artist manifested itself in watercolors. He seemed to subtly fill the features of half-tones, features of watercolor technique. For his watercolor series, he was awarded the title of Laureate of the State Award of the Kazakh SSR.
Интересно, что картина «Сбор хлопкой», как и картина «Синокос», написаны в начале 30-х годов. It is interesting that the paintings «Cotton Harvesting» and «Hay Harvesting» were created in the early 30s, shortly after the artists returned from Moscow. In Moscow, he studied at the Krupska Art Studio. And of course, he faced a few difficulties. Firstly, he didn't have a certificate of formal education. Therefore, the administration didn't want to enroll him officially. But seeing his talent, they allowed him to audit the course. Moreover, the language barrier was also an issue. Since he only knew Kazakh, it was difficult for him to adapt in Moscow. At the same time, there was an opportunity to get to know the teachers personally and visit art museums, get acquainted with the best creations of the artistic heritage of the world. This significantly expanded his creative horizons and understanding of what painting can be. After arriving from Moscow, he begins to create his first painting masterpieces. The artist constantly returns to the portrait genre. He is extremely interested in depicturing a person. After all, man is one of the most amazing creatures of nature. Throughout the entire period of human existence, the image of fellow human inspires artists. Interestingly, when working in portrait genre, Abilhan Kastev set himself a very difficult task. He portrayed people whom he had never seen. Such were the portraits of Kasim of Kenisarihan and that of Amangildi Imanov. While developing the features of Amangildi Imanov for the portrait, the artist went to Imanov's homeland in the Torgai region and began painting portraits of his closest relatives. Referring to the descriptions of contemporaries of the famous military leader and the leader of the National Liberation Movement of 1916, Abilhan Kastev creates numerous pencil sketches where he manages to capture the external resemblance. He uses those sketches as a basis of his first portrait of Amangildi Imanov. Looking at this portrait, everyone who personally knew Amangildi was surprised to note the extraordinary similarity of the character depicted here with the famous military leader. But Abilhan Kastev himself was dissatisfied. Why? He believed that the character depicted looked unconvincing. He didn't feel that the portrait conveys the person who was able to lead an army of many thousands, who possessed extraordinary charisma, who led his devoted people into battles. Therefore, over and over again, Kastev continues developing the perfect image, basically working on Arman Gildi Imanov's depiction for 20 years. In 1950, ten years after the first portrait, Abilhan Kastev creates his second monumental work, in which he managed to achieve all his creative goals. In fact, he had been carrying this idea for ten years, working on its practical implementation. Looking at this portrait, we understand that this person has an incredible charisma. We see a true commander, capable of leading an army of many thousands. Notice how much attention the artist places on the details. Here are the elements of military ammunition, a sword belt, a saber on the side. The military leader is depicted holding a sheet with Arabic script. It was important for the artist to emphasize that this person is literate, that he could read and write, which was an extremely rare phenomenon at the beginning of the century. And the eyes. We see that the eyes are the mirror of the soul, the gaze of a man with an inner core, with the ability to convince his surroundings, the penetrating, sharp gaze of a hawk. Abilhan Kastev had thoroughly studied the biography of Amangildi Imanov, therefore during the filming of Amangildi, he was invited as the main consultant and the biographer of the commander. It was due to Kastev's recommendations, which were considered by the script writers, the film received its great historical accuracy.
Абылхан Кастеев очень часто изображает события, которые имеют очень большое значение. Абылхан and personally for himself. For example, the theme of Turkseep. Why was he returning to this topic on so many occasions? It was because it was a part of his personal biography. In the early 1920s, he worked as a digger at Turkseep construction. He knows firsthand what hard physical labor it is, building a railway. It was a grandiose construction project connecting two parts of a great country. Unprecedented geographical scale for that period, Turkestan and Siberia, the northeastern and southern parts of the grand country connected by a railway. Can you imagine what the nomads roaming the steppe were witnessing? Day by day the length of the railway was gradually growing. Then a grandiose historical moment, the first train follows the new railway track. And all those who witness this scene, they are amazed at the greatness of the event, realizing that they are witnesses of a historical moment. One involuntarily recalls the words from the song of the Atira. We were born to make a fairy tale come true. Men had transformed the country in the name of some new, noble ideals. There are some interesting features in this painting. The artist places all bystanders in the foreground. Interestingly, he doesn't depict a single face of nomads watching the event, all the while conveying their emotions. Delight, surprise, joy, awareness of being a part of a historical moment. This is the magic he wanted to capture. In 1945, the jubilee year of Abai, the greatest Kazakh enlightener, philosopher, poet and writer, an artistic competition was announced among Kazakhstani artists to create a portrait of Abai. According to the Yuri Dombrovsky's memoirs, the visitors of the exhibition presenting the work of contestants were immensely disappointed to observe the same tired face looking from every portrait. All the artists took reference from the single known photograph of Abai, which captured him together with his two sons. Some changed the angle or painted different outfit, but in general the image of Abai himself was absolutely identical. Kastiev, on the contrary, took a completely different approach to painting Abai. He decided to create the image of a young Abai, who has yet to become that great persona of many years to come. The words of edification, which were later translated into numerous languages, are yet to be written. See how the artist depicted a young man. His mind is deep in reading and looks like he has taken his eyes of the book to contemplate on what he has just read. He is not posing, his gaze is directed deep into himself, and at the same time he is struck by some thought that he has just learned from the book. This artistic choice, this method, allowed the artist to find a means to demonstrate that incredible creative potential of a young poet that has yet to flourish. The phenomenon of Abilhan Kastiev resides in his incredible hard work, endless love of life, sincerity and ability to work, which allowed a simple and talented young man to sharpen his talent and develop his creative abilities to perfection. And today our art museum proudly bears the name of this wonderful artist whose art we are endlessly happy to present in our exposition. <laughs>